Growth in Britain's services industry hit a 16-month low in January amid existing client losses, weak gains in new work and lingering concerns about Brexit. The East Market SIPs UK Services Purchasing Managers Index fell to 53 last month from 54.2 in December, below economist expectations of 54.1. A reading above 50 indicates growth. The downbeat economic data comes ahead of Thursday's Bank of England Monetary Policy Committee vote, which is expected to hold interest rates at 0.5%. Services sector output rose at its slowest pace since September 2016, adding to the disappointment over similar PMI manufacturing and construction sector surveys. The pace of UK economic growth slowed sharply at the start of the year as January saw a triple whammy of weaker PMI surveys, said Chris Williamson, chief business economist at his market. The softer service sector growth follows news of the manufacturing upturn losing momentum at the start of the year and a near-stagnant construction sector. Altogether, the PMI surveys point to the slowest pace of expansion since August 2016. Williamson said that the January numbers were signaling a UK growth rate of just under 0.3% for the first quarter of 2018, which would mark a slowdown from 0.5% in December. He added that the hit to services sector expansion reflected waning growth in demand for businesses and consumer-facing services like hotels and restaurants, while transport and communications also suffered a drop in market appetite for the second month running. Many services firms have been knocked hard by Brexit-fueled import costs, as well as surging business rates fuel prices and salaries after the launch of the national living wage. Efforts to offset this by rising prices comes at a tricky time for the British consumer, with households in the grip of a challenging income squeeze on the back of higher inflation and weaker wage growth. The survey showed companies raised their prices in January, given strong upward pressure on cost burdens, particularly around insurance, fuel, transport, and food. But businesses polled said a sustained rise in sales, acquisitions and new offerings helped drive output expansion last month, ultimately helping to keep the PMI reading above 50. Of the new work that businesses were able to attract in January, growth was chalked up to successful marketing campaigns, greater market shares and new services offerings. Companies also continued to hire new staff, with a pace of job creation at a four-month high. Employment in the services sector has now increased continuously for a year and a half. Despite the slowdown, business confidence is at its strongest since last March, with firms still optimistic that business activity will be higher over the course of 2018. James Smith a developed markets economist at Ing said the reading dampens prospects of an imminent interest rate hike. Today's data takes some pressure off the Bank of England to hike rates later this year.
That said, policymakers will take heart from the better recent news on wage growth, which is showing signs of life as skill shortages become more prevalent. We expect the bank to keep its cards fairly close to its chest on Thursday, and we think at this stage, the odds of a May rate hike are roughly 50-50. Callum Pickering, senior UK economist at Berenberg, expects the bow to raise interest rates again in May and November. While the bow is concerned that the short-term risks to demand from Brexit uncertainty could suddenly begin to manifest more seriously, as demand growth is holding up well and underlying inflationary pressures are rising, its tolerance for above-target inflation is low, he said. Although the bow initially responded to the risks to demand from the Brexit vote by easing its policy in August 2016, its policy has become increasingly hawkish, driven by the better-than-expected data over time. The bow takes any directional change in policy seriously. Inflation and interest rate expectations that shift erratically are bad for economies and markets. This is the logic that underpins global central banks' common frameworks for inflation targeting. As the economic data is stronger at the start of 2018 than in mid-2017, when the bow last prepared markets for a hike, it seems likely that the bow will continue with its policy tightening this year.